Welcome back to another episode. Today I have a special guest, Jerome of the Jerome Meadows Experience. He is an English teacher as well, and he speaks very clearly. And today we're going to talk about the latest news of Elon versus Zuck. Who do you think is going to win that battle? Let's get into it. Thanks for listening. Hey, Jerome, how's it going? Not too bad, Carl. How are you? All right. So I have a um, an interesting thing that's been coming across my feeds when when I'm not doom scrolling, but you know, on um, YouTube and Instagram and Twitter, I've been seeing that uh, Elon Musk and Zuckerberg are not only having tweet battles, but they're challenging each other for physical battles. Have you seen this news? I, I've i heard of it very briefly, but, um, you, I, you know, I think there's a lot of interest in, in MMA nowadays. I remember there was a a YouTuber, Logan Paul, who moved into MMA, and uh, there was another uh, a sort of YouTube comedian called Sam Hyde. So I, I think a lot of people are solving their battles in the ring now. Definitely, that's a trend. Yeah, and despite the fact that we have all this modern technology, you know, electric cars, and the metaverse with uh, Zuckerberg, these two guys who are the champions of technology are going back to like the ways of like the Greek and the Romans, and and they want to duke it out and battle in a ring, uh, mano y mano. So, I don't know. Do you do you think uh, who do you, who would you choose to win if there were such a battle? That's uh, that's tough. Um... I mean, Zuckerberg is definitely a lot younger, and I've heard that he's training like Brazilian jiu-jitsu or something at the moment. Uh, I don't think he's particularly good, but he's just started. Uh, I'd say Elon Musk could catch up with him, but Elon Musk is a lot older as well. Well, how old is Elon now? Yeah, I just Googled briefly, and it said that uh, Elon is 51, and Zuckerberg is like mid-30s, 35 or 37, something like that. So that's quite, okay. that's quite an age difference. Um, yeah, yeah, I saw in my social media feed, I saw, I follow Hoist Gracie, who was the the first Brazilian to fight in the UFCs way back in the '90s, and he was just a little, little skinny Brazilian guy fighting guys twice his weight, and he, and he beat them because back then no one no one knew jujitsu or how to wrestle, so anyways, Hoist is standing there, with his arms out like this, and behind him there are three Teslas parked. And then you see a dojo sign. A dojo is where they train jujitsu, right? And he says, Elon Musk, and he, and he ats Elon, and he says, I will train you and prepare you for your fight in the cage. And then he oh, also yeah, ats you could, Dana White. You could do that for free. It's a great way of getting some credibility, you know? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like being um, Kylie Jenner's personal trainer, you know, you might do it for free because you, you, you're going to get a lot of publicity. So it makes a lot of sense as long as you win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if he loses, you know, Hoist is going to look really bad. But I was impressed that he had three Teslas right behind him. I was like, why would he pose in front of Teslas? I mean, I know these guys make a lot of money and everyone wants a Tesla, but that was, it was pretty ridiculous. Um, Product placement? <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing you were talking about... Uh, Elon not training before. Well, I did hear or I read that he told Joe Rogan on his podcast that he trained in karate, karate, uh, mm-hmm. jujitsu, and other martial arts as a child. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, but but like because I, I was I, I used to do karate and I did kendo as well and kickboxing when I was a kid in a in a dojo of Shotokan karate and. Uh, they hand belts out like, you know, participation trophies. You know, if you stick with it long enough, they'll eventually give you a black belt. Uh, so it doesn't really mean you have any fighting ability. Um, that, that's why they sort of color grade uh, all, all of the, the different grades. You know, you know, you, it, back in the old days, you had like a white belt. And I think even in black belts was just a white belt that got dirty, ah. <laughs> essentially. <laughs> With a long enough time. But but children like these sort of incremental increases. They like to go yellow, purple, green, orange, all through the the, the whole rainbow. Um, so, But I don't think that would... Elon's training 45 years ago would, would give him much of an edge, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't know. I, at the same time, I think that Zuckerberg's um, jiu-jitsu tournament, it also looked kind of like a bit of a farce. It didn't 
it looked like they edited the uh, footage to make him look like some champ, even though he is just a white belt and he probably fight, fought some other inexperienced white belt. Um, but it is interesting that they are choosing to battle it out because there are risks, right? If you fight and you're bludgeoning each other in the head or trying to choke someone, there, there are real risks, right? Like you choke yeah. someone unconscious, they might have a stroke or a seizure or maybe a heart attack. And these guys are billionaires with all the money in the world. I, I think their brains are quite important considering what they do, no? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> their biggest assets, yeah. But they are very determined people. I know, like, it, you don't get to where you are in business without having incredible ambition. So if they can just direct that into martial arts, then they could both be very competent fighters if they just maintain that discipline. And, of course, they have the resources to build muscle, get good training as well. So it, it would be quite interesting. Or it could just be two old men, you know, rolling around in a ring for everyone's amusement. But both uh, both would be great. I'd be happy to watch either, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think for, for my my side, I'm in, uh, I'm in Elon's corner, I have to say. I do respect Zuckerberg. He's not as personable or funny or offensive as Elon because El uh, Zuckerberg is more on the uh, alien side, alien side and more on the, you know, he sent support censored media, whereas Elon is the opposite of censorship. And he bought Twitter for how many billion dollars to prevent censorship. So they're kind of polar opposites where Zuckerberg, uh, bans anyone if they say anything a little bit politically incorrect right and mm -hmm. elon says nope there are no rules you can say whatever you want so it's interesting that they are fundamentally opposed to each other in their ideology in that regards well that could make the fight more interesting because if if you know they definitely don't need to fight for money so it could be just a battle of ideologies, which would make it a lot more fun. You know, if they truly believe <laughs> knocking the other person unconscious uh, could be a good match. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And let's just uh, let's just close this. And I always I like to um, think of learning a language as working out. And I think that someone that becomes good in martial arts or business, like you said, you practice your, the fundamental skills every single day. And so if that's fighting, that means you're, you know, you're going to be doing boxing, wrestling, kicking and working on your cardio, but they're doing something every single day to train their body in preparation for the fight. So if you were to use this analogy and run with it of language study as preparation for a big event or fight, can you give me an example of, uh, of how that your teaching is like your your hoist grace you're coaching a student for the match in the ring what could be the equivalent of a possible fight for your students hmm. well the equivalent of a fight like a, a championship would probably be an exam i suppose <laughs> that would probably be the, the the cleanest analogy um i think like like a fighter you've got to have your eye on a championship you you need to have your uh, like a goal it, it's it's quite hard to train if you don't believe in anything and i think if you're learning a language you have to have like a core reason you know if you um, want to use tinder in japan or if you want to like you know pass a test to emigrate or something or get a job so i i think you need a sense of direction otherwise you're just sort of uh stabbing in the dark <laughs> okay yeah so i think that having a good Hoist Gracie in your corner or a Jerome helping teach you is important because a good coach, they, they don't, um, they don't fight, right? They're not actually the ones in the ring. They're just coaching. No, the mentors. Students. So the fighter yeah. is the one in the end that has to, um, perform under pressure, but having a good coach to help build the students or the fighters confidence and to motivate them to work hard is uh very important i think yeah maybe that's what we should be focusing on who uh who their trainers are more than who the fighters are yeah yeah so we'll see we'll see who's in in corner corner zuck and who's in corner elon all right jerome that was nice talking to you um you too thank you very much see you next time
Ciao. See you next time. Ciao.